The gospel lesson uh, for this Sunday is found in the Gospel of St. Matthew. I'll be reading verses uh, 23 through 27 of chapter 8 of the Gospel of Matthew, and we do that in Jesus' name. I would ask you to stand if you would be able and uh, to give respect to the reading of God's word. <clears throat> And when he got into the boat, his disciples followed him. And behold, there arose a great storm in the sea, so that the boat was covered with the waves, but he himself was asleep. And they came to him and awoke him, saying, Save us, Lord, we're perishing. And he said to them, Why are you timid, you men of little faith? And then he arose and rebuked the wind and the sea, and it became perfectly calm. And the men marveled, saying, What kind of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? Father, these are your words. Sanctify us and lead us into the truth, for your word is the truth. Amen. You may be seated. A very interesting book I read some years ago was about the 1938 University of Washington a rowing team that won an Olympic gold medal. The book was entitled Men in a Boat. The authenticity of what brought that group of young university students to their Olympic triumphs, overcoming the hindrances along the way, was an inspirational read. It was a good book, and I would recommend it to you. But uh, we're not a book club. So we are going to talk about some other men in a boat and the man that was in the boat with them. He was Jesus Christ, the men, his disciples, and the Sea of Galilee was the location. Now, I being a Minnesotan flatlander, I'm not going to stand up here and talk very much about what it is to be a, a fisherman on the ocean. The fishing I did was to troll on the lakes or in the wintertime cut cut ice, a hole in the ice and, and angle or spear for fish. But sea fishing, that's, that's, that's a whole different world. But I will say to you, I do know of what God's word says regarding the man, Jesus Christ, true man, true God, in that boat, with some very real men who had been fishers of fish, but were being made into fishers of men. The ambience of a boat on the Sea of Galilee is the setting. And this morning I'm going to direct your focus on Jesus who leads, giving opportunity to follow in faith. And what he did for those men, he wants to do for us today. It says in the verses prior to our text this morning that Jesus saw a crowd developing around him. And as it happened, and what was this dynamic that was taking place, he saw that it was best to get out of there. Now, I can't explain to you what he saw or why that was, but all I can only say to you is that he saw it and he said, exit left. And he said to his men, let's go. And as he left, as he turned to leave, one of the scribes came up to him and said, oh, master, teacher, uh, I'll just go wherever you go. And uh, Jesus turned to him 
And he said, well, you know, foxes have their holes they, they go into, and the birds that fly around, they have their, they have their nests. But the Son of Man doesn't even have a, have a place to lay his head. Now, that isn't a great thing to say to someone to encourage them to follow, is it? Usually you get a promise, you know, well, if you follow me, boy, you, you really get wealthy. Or, boy, you're going to be smart. If you follow me, boy, will you be smart? No, he said, I can't promise you. I'm not going to promise you. He didn't that he can't. I'm not going to promise you anything. But he kept on going. Now, what happened to that man, I don't know. Because that's the last we hear of it in Scripture. So apparently, he wasn't too excited with what Jesus had to say to him. Another man came up to him, one of the disciples. Now, there's, there were more than the 12. There were a number of disciples that were following Jesus. And he said, I, I, I'd like to go with you, but uh, i got to go back and bury my dad. And Jesus, what did he say to him? Let the dead bury the dead. I don't know how they do that. Wasn't very encouraging, was it? But he went on. And as he went on, with all the, without all this ballyhoo of a, of a crowd and all the excitement and looking for all sorts of excitement, exciting things and maybe even benefits of following Jesus, he gets into the boat. And as he does that, he is presenting <coughs> for them and for us this morning, even challenging these men and for us this morning into faith-stretching decisions. Jesus walks on down, gets into the boat. The disciples who followed him followed him down, got into the boat, and it says that, that as they got into the boat as well, keep in mind, folks, that Jesus, <coughs> Jesus is leading these disciples and basically demonstrating a continuation of what they had already said they would do to leave all and follow him. Having no idea, no idea what was ahead. Let me be clear this morning. Jesus' invitation to follow him is still open to each and every one of us. But in the context of verses 18 through 22, which is just prior to our, our, our text for this morning, the call is to set aside everything else, <coughs> choosing to follow Jesus wherever he goes. Paul writes about this in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. He says, where we walk by faith, and not by sight. We walk in obedience, not by great knowledge. To follow Jesus is to respond to the invitation by Jesus himself to come and follow me, but not because of the benefits we receive, but to just simply be with Jesus. To follow Jesus is an act <coughs> of responsive obedience from a grace-filled desire on his part to have us be with him. He wants that. Too many times we get caught up in emotional issues <coughs> and emotion is not to be put down because emotions are real. But we are talking not about feel good, it's about doing as what Jesus invites us to do. Are you willing to follow Jesus wherever he goes? I think that's part of the message this morning, an important part of the message.
Often I see in this experience that Jesus leads into faith-stretching experiences. Now stepping into the boat, casting out into the calm waters, the disciples had no idea what was ahead. We see in these verses that to follow Jesus into faith-stretching experiences, <clears throat> we go from times of calm to even like what the disciples experienced a storm. Have there storms in your life? Well, we've been praying about a number of storms this morning in our prayer time. But for the disciples that day, that was a storm of storms. We we're talking about the big storm out on the East Coast with all the snow and blowing and cold weather and so forth and so on. The folks, this was a seismos, is the word in Greek. A seismic type of storm with seismic waves. And the, and, and the torrential storm where the waves were coming over the gunnels of the, of the boat and the, and the men see who are, who are, who are uh, fishermen who are experienced on the Sea of Galilee, and they know that this is a serious situation. Luther treats this incident as being typical of storms a Christian is sure to face from the opposition of Satan and the unchristian world, saying, says Luther, for as soon as you commit yourselves to the Lord and come with him in the ship, wind, storm, and buffeting will surely follow. Luther also says, and quoting him, where before all is quiet, as soon as Christ permits himself to be heard with his preaching and to be seen with his miracles, there pandemonium breaks out on every hand as the devil angrily stirs up and ag agitates the robes of the world. The robes such as Pharisees, scribes, and the high priest who want him dead. Do not think for a moment that Satan is at all pleased when a person leaves all to follow Jesus. The man Jesus was in that boat, though. And, and the men in the boat, of course, could go to him. Now, I say man because Jesus, the man, tired and sound asleep after a full day's activity was truly man-tired. Apparently, there was not an anticipated danger, although the Sea of Galilee is famous for its sudden storms. But I think this was a once-in-a-lifetime storm. It was a storm, it says, of waves of seismic dimensions, as I mentioned. So filled with fear, the men wake Jesus, exclaiming, Lord, save us, we're perishing. And Lenski kind of helped me understand this when I read his commentary to get a better understanding here. This is, Lenski points out that these were fishermen who knew about sailing in the Sea of Galilee. And so the storm was not a surprise to them. But at the same time, they recognized how grave was the situation for the boat in such a storm. Yet isn't it interesting? <laughs> they go to a carpenter's son to say, we got a problem here. They go to a carpenter's son and start a mayday call. But they went to the right place, didn't they? Because it was there that they found the one who is the master of the waves of the waves that roll. Let's not be deceived into thinking that being a Christian is a move to Easy Street. Storms come, it comes to all. 
and Christians are not at all in any way uh, exempt from problems. But the Lord is with us in the boat. We're not alone. I want you to remember this. Like the men in the boat go to Jesus. When something comes up and you can't face it, and you can't understand it, or you can't handle it, go to Jesus. When things are impossible, hopeless, go to Jesus. He's much more than a carpenter's son, folks. He is the Lord of the waves that roll. And that's why out of these faith-stretching experiences, Jesus continues to lead us into faith-stretching trust. These men, followers of Jesus, had nowhere else to go but to Jesus. <laughs> but they had him in the boat. And Jesus speaks to, this, to their fear and to their little faith. So they, they really had to trust him. Listen to what Jesus said to them. Why are you fearful men of little faith? Now while there's some debate if Jesus is making a statement about their lack of faith or if he was questioning it, what stood out to me is that Jesus addressed the need <clears throat> in their lives to trust him. And he is speaking to us today for us to trust him. Looking at this portion, two things become very, very apparent to me. And I want you to understand these two things and, and then take them into your lives this morning. Number one, Fear comes when we have lost control and can confuse us as followers of Jesus. To be focusing on the storms, focusing on, uh, focusing on the seismic or the, the, the largeness of the, of the problems that seem to be an impossibility for us to resolve. But please understand this. God does not permit these times to not only stretch our faith in him, but also to stretch our trust in him. That's what he's asking of us today. That is the first thing I want you to understand. Secondly, as Lenski points out, we have no promise that danger shall never plunge us into death. But it's an experience if we to die we will die with Jesus. Matthew tells us that when it was that Jesus got up and rebuked the, the, the winds and the sea, that a great calm took place. And both Matthew and Luke re record it that way. But over in, uh, in the Gospel of Mark, it, it reads this way, and in the, talking about Jesus, said to the sea, hush, be still, with a word. Just verbally stop the storm. And it was calm and quiet and peace in the midst of chaos. What a powerful miracle that is, folks. It says that the men in the boat who had followed Jesus were full of wonder. And they turned to one another and they said, what manner of man is this that even the winds and the sea obey him? It was truly a faith-stretching experience for them that they did follow Jesus into the boat, for they would never have had such an experience if they hadn't been there. It came as a result of obedience and trusting the Lord. 
that they got to be a part of that miracle. You know, I'm sure they got out of the boat and they wouldn't have told others about what happened. But you know, for those who heard about it, it would be never the same as for those who were actually there. We had experiences like that where God met you in your life and when things happened and you just say, boy, I wish I could explain this, but boy, it, 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 yeah, you had to have been there. Should have been there. What a thing. He got up and he said, hush, and it was. He said, be calm, and it was. Oh, sure, yeah, okay. Oh, no, you ought to have been there. He's the one that makes the difference. He's the one that even calmed the wind down. Oh, no, just kind of, uh, no, he did it. It was a first-hand experience. And this was just the beginning, folks. There were still lots of miracles ahead. Can you imagine how those men were changed that day? But then, that's what God wants to do for us today. Jesus, uh, as it's recorded in uh, the Gospel of John, chapter 8, verse 12 said, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of light. The man in the boat, Jesus the Savior, is still leading Christians in this world, yes, in our midst here today. The point is to be brought into an ever deeper trusting relationship with him through these experiences. <coughs> Whatever they may be and however they may come. I remember this was a, a favorite. I kept this from my mother. My mother loved poetry. And I kind of like it too, but I'm, I'm not always that great to spend time reading it. It's more fun to read historical books for me. But this is a really a special little poem that's, a poem that's been in my life since I was a boy. And I would just ask that you pray along with me as I read this poem. God has not promised skies always blue, flower strewn paths always on all our days through. God has not promised sun without rain, joy without sorrow, peace without pain. God hath not promised we shall not know toil and temptation, trouble and woe. He hath not told us we shall not bear many a burden and many a care. God hath not promised smooth roads and wide, swift, easy travel, needing no guide. Never a mountain, rocky and steep, never a river, turbid and deep. But God hath promised strength for the day, rest for the labor, light for the way, grace for the trials, help from above, unfailing sympathy, and undying love. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the record of these men in the boat with you, Jesus. And our lives are like that boat. Times of calm and times of turmoil, tur uh, turmoil and, and uh, chaos. We pray for our faith made decisions, inspired, encouraged decisions to trust you, to leave our problems with you and let you resolve the chaos and bring peace to us. In Christ's name we pray it, amen.
In closing this morning, I invite you to uh, turn